Let's talk about how to get rid of cellulite, the cottage cheese-like appearance that you don't want on your body. I did a video on this a while ago, but I wanted to update it because I have some new information that you're going to be excited about. Now, just realize there are things you can do that will create a significant difference in cellulite. Sometimes uh, people will tell you there's nothing you can do, so just live with it. Don't buy into that. On that note, in order to fix a problem, we have to really understand the problem. The more we understand it, the easier it is to fix it. And when people talk about cellulite, there are so many different theories, so many different treatments, so many different uh, viewpoints, okay? But I found some great fascinating data uh, in a patent, which I'm gonna put the link down below. And the cool thing about a patent is they organize all the research on cellulite for you. So that gives you a head start. So you have something to work off of. Here's some information that will kind of give you a little foundation before I get into what to do. Cellulite only occurs in the butt, thighs, and hip. It does not occur in the breast, the arm, or your stomach, okay? Now, what's interesting about that is that in this area of the body, there are twice as many alpha-2 receptors. Now, what is an alpha-2 receptor? An alpha-2 receptor is in the fat cell, and it tells the body to store fat for later use, okay? And so one of the big purposes of this fat around this lower part of the body is to act as a reserve for pregnancy, okay, in lean times. So this fat can actually provide fuel for the baby if someone's pregnant. So what else do we know? We know that cellulite gets worse with pregnancies, okay? It gets worse when you take hormone replacement therapy. It gets worse when you take birth control pills. It gets worse with menopause. So normally, okay, right underneath the skin, you have this uh, very structured, organized connective tissue, like a fishnet that holds everything real nice and organized and very, very tight. So that way we have this nice smooth layer of skin on the outside, and then we have the fat layer, and then we have the muscle right underneath it. That's in a normal situation. With cellulite, the bands, the collagen bands, are partially or completely dissolved. And that is some new information that I recently found out about, okay? So what's happening is you're getting this loss of this fibrous fishnet that's supposed to hold these fat cells really nice and organized. And they are basically all chaotic and they're pushing up against the skin now because there's nothing to hold them in place. And they're creating this dimple cottage cheese-like appearance. You also have an enlarged fat cell. You have usually thin skin. We have circulation loss. Sometimes we have fluid retention. Sometimes we have a backup of the lymphatic system. And we usually always have atrophy of the muscles underneath. So it's a combination of quite a few things. But the question is, why? What is causing this loss of this collagen? Well, this is not a fat problem. This is a collagen disorder caused by excess estrogen, okay? Now, wait a second. How can it be excess estrogen if, if someone has menopause? Well, during menopause, you have a loss of ovary function. And what a lot of people don't know is you have other parts of your body that also make estrogen, like your fat cells, like your skin cells. They actually make estrogen. And the way that they make it is through an enzyme called aromatase. So what aromatase does right underneath the skin and in the fat cell is it converts testosterone into estrogen. So it's going to get this extra estrogen from the testosterone. And probably what's happening, and there's this compensatory or compensating mechanism when there's lower estrogen to then make more uh, in various places. And so we have two things going on. We have this excess estrogen that destroys collagen fibers and elastin. Okay, if there's too much, if there's just a right amount, it's not going to destroy anything. But if there's too much, it's going to be a problem. And if there's excess aromatase, that is going to destroy the fibroblasts that make the collagen underneath the skin. And so you're going to end up with like virtually nothing to hold this fat in place. And that is the 
a jiggly kind of fat that that people just want to get rid of. And so they get in a diet, they start losing fat, and they, it just never gets rid of the cellulite because it's not a fat problem. And it's not even necessarily a diet problem directly, even though that is involved indirectly. It's really a hormonal problem, mainly to do with estrogen, but there's other hormones involved too, like cortisol, because the cortisol is going to create the atrophy of the muscle, like a loss of growth hormone as you age. That's the main fat burning hormone, like insulin, which if you have too much insulin, that's going to block any chance of losing fat, which now this enlarged fat cell never is able to go away. So we want to reduce insulin. And then melatonin, not just for your sleep, for your antioxidants. There's a lot of interesting new information about melatonin in another video that is very interesting. But the loss of melatonin can create a lot of issues related to cellulite, as well as just fat burning in general, and having a nice quality sleep, and preventing a lot of illnesses. And then we have DHEA. This is kind of like a, a pre-hormone that will help you make other hormones. And usually as we age, we become deficient in this precursor. And so that could be another issue as well. All right. So now that you have the foundation, let's go into a plan of what you can do about it. Okay. Here's the plan. Number one, we have to fix the atrophy problem. How do we do that? We have to stimulate the muscles. Which ones? the glutes, the thighs, and the hip muscles. There's some really good exercises to isolate those muscles. Uh, doing lunges, squats, and also retro walking. Now, what is that? That is walking backwards. It's an awesome exercise to stimulate the areas where people have cellulite. And you can even do it on the treadmill if you do it very gradually, because if you do it too fast, you can hurt yourself. So I'm going to put links down below so you can learn how to do each of these with the right form and do it correctly. Don't just jump and start doing it. I found some really good videos relating to these three things right here. Now, as far as walking backwards, you can do this at a park. Um, just, you know, watch where you're going, okay? And of course, when you're treadmill, you start off like with one mile an hour and you just gradually increase. There's another video I'm gonna put down below that shows you um, a higher level of doing this. It should only be done once you've gotten in pretty good shape, but I found a video that's just awesome that would really work this whole area because what we have to do is we have to stimulate these muscles to cause a growth hormone to be activated and to increase the muscle tone underneath this whole thing. That's going to help greatly. Now, I wanted to put number four for certain people, but not everyone because this is pretty intense. I recently did a video on the most powerful high intensity interval training exercise, which is sprinting. It's called a HIT exercise. This will produce the most fat burning of anything. The problem with it, you can't do it with uh, bad knees or a bad back. You have to be in pretty good shape to do this and you have to go really, really light. In other words, if you overdo it, you're going to be sore for a long period of time because you're doing this massively intense workout with like 100% effort and uh, you really can only go for a short period of time. In fact, I only recommend going for 10 seconds, just doing it two or three times max, maybe two times, right? Because you're going to feel so sore the next day, you're probably not going to get out of bed like myself, where I did it a lot longer thinking that I was 18 again. And so I'm only 29, so I don't know why I can't handle it. But you can get very, very sore with this sprinting and... Uh, you're going to work muscles that you've never, ever worked before, but it's very, very therapeutic. Maybe you're not going to do a hardcore flat out sprint. Maybe you just do it like at 50%. All right. So you're going to watch these videos and start to stimulate these muscles on a regular basis. Okay. Number two, you're going to fix the circulation problem. What happens with cellulite is you lose the vascular system right underneath the skin. So we get a lot of congestion. We don't have a lot of circulation. We get a lot of uh, free radical damage and, and everything is kind of chaotic. So there's a couple of things you can do to increase blood flow to the area. There are several things you can do. You can do the rebound exercises. Okay. I have a video on that. I will put that down below. 
And you can also do red light therapy. They have these little wands that you can rub on your skin. Now, at first you're thinking, that's not going to do anything. But there's some really powerful research using infrared light. It's extremely therapeutic for increasing melatonin. Okay, if you haven't seen my video on that, I put that down below too. Melatonin is one of the most powerful antioxidants in your entire body. So it's going to protect the mitochondria from all this free radical damage. So it's going to help you just stay healthy and prevent the um, aging of the skin. And it's going to help you sleep. Apparently the pineal gland is really only a backup to this other melatonin in all the other cells in the body, which is stimulated by infrared from the sun in other locations. But you can use the red light therapy to increase melatonin. Some people are doing it with the infrared saunas, and there's a lot of different things you can do with that. So that's one thing you can do to increase melatonin, increase antioxidants, and increase your sleep, which is gonna lower cortisol and help you recover much better from this workout. Doing a dry brush, okay? I did a video on this, where you're getting this brush and you're rubbing the superficial part of your skin to stimulate a reaction in your skin to cause it some stress so it can rebound and actually start to improve circulation. A lot of great data on this. I would highly recommend getting a dry brush and stimulating the outside of the skin, which is gonna affect the inside of the skin right below the surface. The other thing you can do is to get a massage in this area down here on a regular basis because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get more blood flow. We're trying to get more lymph moving through the body. The lymph system is at the end of the circulatory system. So you have all the vascular system that ends up in the capillaries and then it crosses over into the lymph system, okay? And that it's a whole different circulatory system. And so when you do like rebound exercises, and you do red light therapy, dry brush, massage. These are all really good to stimulate uh, circulation and as well as lymphatic drainage. All right, the next one, fix the collagen problem. How are we gonna do that? Well, there's a condition called autophagy and that occurs when you do fasting. Autophagy is a condition that allows you to recycle old damaged proteins as in collagen scar tissue, fibrous tissue. And not only does it break that down, it replaces it with new tissue. So autophagy is a condition that is very rejuvenating. It's anti-aging. And you want to start doing fasting on a regular basis. Not only that, fasting will stimulate growth hormone and allow you to burn ketones, which is all very therapeutic to your skin, as well as help you lose the fat directly. So I would recommend doing intermittent fasting on a regular basis, as well as prolonged fasting on more of a periodic basis. I have a lot of videos. I'll put a link down below of how you can get started. And then I'm going to recommend getting an aromatase inhibitor cream. Okay. I'm not going to get into brands because I don't want to mention a brand and all of a sudden if they change the formula, then, then you're going to blame me, the whole thing. So you, you're going to have to do your research on that. You want to get aromatase inhibitor cream. You can get them on Amazon. You can buy them from various health food stores. One is called DIM, okay? That's a concentrated cruciferous version. You don't want to get the pills. You want to get the topical version and you want to rub it into your skin, okay? Each night before you go to bed. What is this going to do? It's going to help reduce this aromatase, which is creating the damage so we can actually stop the bleeding and we can actually start to turn things around. So this is just one piece of data that I found in that patent that was very fascinating with all the research that backs it up. Okay, some mistakes that people make. Going too fast, okay, when you're exercising. You can very easily overdo it and then be completely sore uh, for a very long time. So you want to go into it very slowly when you start out, especially if you have atrophy. All right, the next mistake is working out over soreness. So if you're sore, don't keep working out because the benefit of that workout is to get sore and then recover, okay? If you work out over soreness, you're basically damaging an already damaged muscle. All right, the next point is not creating enough stimulus for the muscles. So 
if you're going too light and you're not doing it enough, that's another problem. So we want the optimum amount of stimulus in the muscles so you actually feel it and you get sore and then you're going to let it heal. So we don't want to go too light and too infrequent. The other point is your sleep. If your sleep is poor, then you're going to have a hard time having this work out because the cortisol is going to be very high. The insulin is going to be very high um, because of the cortisol. And that's one point you really want to focus on. But the infrared uh, information can greatly help melatonin and help you sleep. All right. And last point, a big mistake is not giving enough time. Thinking it's going to happen in a couple of weeks. Unfortunately, you have probably years of breakdown of this collagen, this, this web-like fibrous net that's been breaking down. And it's going to take some time. It's going to take some months. And it could take even up to a year, maybe a year and a half. But just realize that you're going to improve the more you do it, but you just want to stick to it to the point where you start seeing change. The problem is when you evaluate yourself today versus tomorrow, you see nothing. So the, the change is going to be so gradual, you, you're going to think it's not working. So I highly recommend you take pictures before and after, maybe once a month, so you can visually see that it is working. All right. If you haven't seen my video on melatonin yet, I think that would be a perfect next video to watch. Check it out right here.